to implement a native uh, um, construct in Node.js. And they allow you to process data in chunks. And so you can have readable streams, as you saw, which can be reading from a file, getting data from the some service, or just the standard in of a tool. Uh, and then you can you pipe that with the pipe command to a transform stream, so a parser, a filter, or some crazy multi-thread analysis that you want to know to do. And then you can pipe to a um, write stream, which could be writing to a file or standard out. Now, this is fine when um, your streams are fast and you don't have too much data because the data just flows in and there's no issue. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect. Gets there, gets transformed. Um, no issue here. But the problem is when you have a bottleneck. So one of the streams is slower. If you don't have too much data, that's fine. Even if the data takes a while to get processed, nothing will happen. But sometimes you cannot predict uh, what will be, how small will be the stream or how slow will be the stream. And you, if you have a complex pipeline, you cannot predict where the bottleneck is happening. So the bottleneck could be a network issue, network latency. So there's no way you can predict that. Um, so your pipeline has to be robust to deal with that. So the first implementation of streams was uh, what we call push streams. So they'll just push data downstream. So what would happen is if, if you had a big uh, object, a big chunk of data being processed downstream, when new data came in, uh, it will get lost because it couldn't be piped to the downstream. Um, so you end up, that's why you should avoid using stream, uh, version one of streams because you might lose data if you're not listening to that data. But the now, the way streams are implemented, you can still use the push way, but the way you should do it is actually use the pull way. So downstream gives feedback upstream to pull more data. So what happens is if new data comes in uh, and it's already full, when I do the push, this push data, it returns a false. So it tells automatically to the streams that you cannot push more data. So the, the content goes to a buffer. And if the buffer is full, it will just pause the upstream stream. Um, once I'm done with the data, so downstream I did this push data and we learn true. And then to say I want more data, I use the callback. So I, uh, what uh, in some of my demo I called next. You can call it whatever you want, but this function tells uh, I want more data. I'm done with this. Give me more data. And you can only call the callback once, but you can call the push as many times as you want. So imagine you have a big chunk of data, and that's what I did in my example. I had this array, and I started pushing one object, uh, each object of the array downstream. So you can break your chunk of data and do the this push several times, as many times as you want. And once you're done processing that chunk, that's when you call uh, the callback. And that's how streams can do things like back pressure. And so what you saw until now were read streams, transform streams, and write streams. But there's a lot of kinds of streams. So a duplex stream looks like a transform. You can write and you can read to it. But it's actually the combination of a writable and a readable stream. And they don't have to be in any way related. They can be doing different things. Um, you can imagine this as a server or a database. You can write data to it, and you'll store it somewhere, and you can get data out of it. But these two streams, they're not connected. They just, uh, the duplex is just an abstraction uh, on top of that. Um, and then another kind of streams you can have is the, the pass-through streams. So this is what you saw when I implemented the counters. So I had a stream that just counted what was coming in and one didn't touch the data. So that's how you can implement metrics and see how much data is passing through. But um, the other useful thing that I use a lot uh, pass-through streams for is that you can fork your streams. You have a stream that looks like a T, but it's actually not a fork. What's happening is you have your stream, your pass-through stream, that is just watching for the data coming in. And since it's watching it, you can then reuse that same stream somewhere else. So in my first talk, when I did the forks, and I was piping the fork one to another stream, so that means then you can basically copy your data. So that might be useful if you're trying to do multi-thread, for example. Parallelization, you can do it that way by forking. Or if you're trying to query, now I could, I have the same object duplicated, I could do, uh, pass it to two different downstreams to do 
for example, uh, different queries, like I was doing on NCBI, fetching all, uh, all those uh, data from different sources. Um, and that's the basics of streams. So here I have a list of the benefits. We also sent you yes, last night a PDF with the details of streams. So as I mentioned, there's these five kinds of uh, streams. And the way to implement it is usually use an, an abstraction like, for example, Mississippi. So I've been using, I showed you the transform streams. I used the module true to implement them. But module two is part of Mississippi. So you can actually just install in Mississippi and you have a bunch of tools. Or you can do it the hard way and you just subclass the streams uh, class from Node and then you implement the appropriate methods. Be careful if you do that. You should actually install streams as a module too because if you abstract the, the, the one that comes with Node, then you're locked in into that specific Node version. So if you don't want to be locked in, you just install it, uh, the streams as a dependency and then uh, it's compatible with any node version. So this, I think in the afternoon, this slide will be very useful because you have here um, how to create streams using Mississippi. If you go to the GitHub, you have um, code examples, how to do this. And um, this is the easy way to do it. And that's what uh, you're gonna, you should be doing in the afternoon. Um, I put a bunch of other links, there's a bunch of on the discussion, there's a bunch of useful uh, stream modules you can use um, to do a bunch of cool stuff. These guys, Max, Matthias, and Substack, um, they contribute a lot of streams um, to Node.js. So if you follow them, you'll probably find a stream for whatever um, thing you're trying to do. Um, and that's it. I hope uh, that was helpful. Thank you. If you have any question, please ask or come talk to me later. <laughs> Thank you.